Hi everyone, welcome to my favorites for 2021. As you probably know by now, I have been gone from YouTube for quite a few months. I actually just recently posted a Get Ready With Me where I didn't talk too much about it just because I actually don't want to talk too much about it. But you know, we just kind of chatted and caught up a little bit. And yeah, I'm back. And since I didn't get a chance to do a lot of the wrap up videos back in December, I figured why not still do some of my 2021 finale videos now in January? I hope that you guys don't mind. I hope that it's not like old news anymore and that you're curious to hear what are some of the products that I really enjoyed in the year of 2021. So All right, so before we jump right into my 2021 favorites, it's not going to be that many, and I'm actually going to do a totally separate video dedicated to eyeshadow palettes. So this is going to be just a few complexion products. I'm not including skincare in here either, just because my life is not honestly organized enough for that yet. Just pulled out some products that have been in my everyday makeup bag all throughout most of the year, and that's where we're at. I just recently moved. Everything is still kind of not as organized as I'd like it to be so it makes planning for videos a little bit trickier but we're doing it we're doing it and if you are new to my channel or returning thank you so much for being here uh, for those of you that don't know my name is Natalia I am a concert pianist and I love all things beauty so much so that I have accumulated a lot of beauty and we're gonna have a lot of content this year where I declutter some of it get to know some of it maybe give a away some of it we'll see it's going to be a fun exciting year here for me on my channel i think and i hope that you will consider joining me so please subscribe especially if you like more mindful content with a slant more towards using products we own than constantly acquiring new ones. Let's jump in because I only have a few minutes to do this. I only have a few products in front of me and I don't want to keep you guys too long. So in 2021, I used makeup fairly regularly in the mid part of the year, I want to say. I started off not using makeup all that much because I was going through a lot of mental health issues and it sort of continued throughout the year. And then in the last four months of the year, I probably only wore makeup a total of like four times and that was for performances. So that's why there's not a lot of products. But I do have to say the few products that I discovered, I kept coming back to over and over and over and over again because they were easy to use. They were worked great. And those are the ones we're going to talk about today. If I did not discover anything in a certain category and I used products that had been in my collection prior to 2021, I'm not going to talk about them. This is things that I acquired this year, not necessarily released this year, but I purchased them this year. And I'm excited because I think this is my very first best of ever on my channel. So yay. No primers. I only used old ones. So let's jump into other complexion products. I discovered quite a few tinted moisturizers and a couple of foundations. And the two that stood out to me is this one from Maison, Maison. This is their Snail Repair Intensive BB Cream. I have, I think, shade 21. This has SPF 50, so I really should get going on using that this year quite a bit. It is a teeny tiny bit drying on me because I do have very dry skin but overall I really like this BB cream because it is uh, a little more full coverage than most of the tints that I feel like were released in 2021 which is great you know on certain days whatever is happening so I really like the coverage on this it's very lightweight you don't feel it overall really comfortable to use as I said like my only maybe con would be it's not quite as hydrating and dewy as I like but that's only because I have super dry skin. However, in the summer, this works really, really well for me. And with the SPF, not that we should be relying on SPF in our foundations, but nonetheless helps to have a little extra, especially in the summer months. So yeah, I really enjoyed that this year. And then the other tinted moisturizer that I really liked, it's actually called a tinted hydrator. It was this wet and wild one. Now this one is lighter, great for like 
easy everyday use it has hyaluronic acid and squalene in here so i don't know if it would work for everybody because i know some of those ingredients don't work for all of us and it is in the color fair in my case because it is so lightweight i would say this is light i wouldn't call this medium color, light coverage I, I think this is light coverage. Yes, you can build it up a little bit, but you're not gonna get anything close to what you could with the Maison or Maison. But I really, really enjoyed this all throughout the summer months, especially. I haven't used it now in a few months, but I keep eyeing it and thinking I'd really like to try it again, see if I still feel just as strongly about it because I really, really enjoyed it uh, a few months back. For concealer, there was one and it was a standout and I've been using pretty much this concealer exclusively ever since even my project pan concealers have been suffering and that's the Giorgio Armani power fabric this is not a new release people have been raving about this for a while on YouTube but it is expensive and I only finally allowed myself to buy it this year last year of course was my entire year long no buy so I could not try it even if I wanted to I'm really glad I did because with my aging eyes I am 40 now I've noticed a change in my skin quite rapidly so I I really need concealers that are not just about coverage but more about hydration and not accentuating any of my fine I mean of course you're still gonna see you know it's it's my skin and it's aging and it is what it is but at least this does not make it look worse which a lot of concealers even ones I used to love have started doing now that my skin is older so I'm really really enjoying this concealer I cannot recommend it highly enough especially if you've been having a hard time finding something that doesn't look dry and cakey and wrinkly and all of that for powders I have two they're both in boxes I don't know why I have the number seven lift and luminate triple action finishing powder I've been hearing about this powder also for quite a while on YouTube and this was the year I finally got it I mean it's a powder I don't know do I show you guys things like this the only thing is I feel like the color it's light and I feel like it's a little too light even for somebody as fair as I I would have to see do they have a shade that is not gonna be too dark for me that the shade range if I remember correctly is not so great in this but it's lightweight it really works both all over the face and especially under the eyes for me I've been really really enjoying it and I'm so excited to finally have tried it after hearing about it for what feels like years on YouTube and then of course Samantha March I feel like has made all of us buy this who's with me I'm sure she's not the only one that's raved about it but that girl's been hyping this powder up the whole year and I do have to say I'm really enjoying it maybe not quite as much as Samantha but I also don't wear makeup on the daily like she does so I probably haven't even had a chance to fall as madly in love with it even if we were meant to be but the times I have used it which has been numerous times you can see I'm already rubbing uh, part of it off I've really really liked it it is better all over the face uh, however you can use it under the eyes and I'm excited to continue using it and to continue seeing how I feel about it and now we just have a couple of blushes a couple of highlighters a couple of miscellaneous and that's pretty much it I told you guys not that much going on here actually speaking of Samantha March let's get this out of the way I picked up her life's a draft collection from Ofra at the start of the year I know Ofra has been under some hot water you know with good reason but nonetheless uh love Samantha definitely still use her palette and I want to talk specifically about the face products because the eyeshadows are okay but I've been really really enjoying the face products in this palette I've been loving the highlighter probably my favorite is definitely the highlighter but I've also been able to make both the bronzer and the blush work a tiny bit dark for me but with a light hand I've been really liking all three products so so I know this goes on sale I think quite frequently Ofra does run sales and if you really love Samantha like I do and have uh, wanted to support her I definitely recommend that palette I think it's lovely then for blushes I have two I have this one which is a cream blush this is from Juicy Peng Jelly Blusher in PK01 I should have looked it up I think this is in plum but I'm not sure I can't get enough of this thing it is so easy to use I just use an elf stippling brush put it in you can't overdo it you can't underdo it you can build it up it's a great color on me and goes with everything I can 
put it under powder blushes. I can put it over powder products. I've been really liking this blush. And the other one that I've really enjoyed is this Nabla Skin Glazing in Truth. I picked this up during the Alter 21 Days of Beauty. They had it 50% off. I have one other shade that I don't even know if I've tried, but I've been really, really liking this one. Very often I will go in with a cream blush like the Juicy Pang, or I also tried the Tower 28 blush this past year, but I've only used it a couple of times, so I didn't feel like it's fair to put it in this video, although so far so good. I have it actually on today and I have this on top. Those were the products I used in my Get Ready With Me that I recently posted, so I can link that if you're curious to see. These have been standouts, really enjoyed both of these. And then I have two highlighters, both of them I discovered pretty early on in the year. One was actually a very generous gift last year, but I primarily used it this year. So this is a few weeks later because as I was filming my 2021 favorites, my phone kept just disconnecting whenever it felt like it. It happened several times when I was filming my initial get ready with me that day. We have a truck backing up. And that whole day, well, that whole day, the, the few hours I was trying to get that video done, something was happening with my phone. It would just turn on and off whenever it wanted. The same thing happened on that day and I didn't have time to finish recording that video. I just basically had to run out the door. Uh. Oh gosh, that's annoying. So because I was just filming my project pan update for my finale for 2021, I don't know which video at this point is going to go up when, <laughs> but I figured I would jump on and talk about the four remaining products that I didn't get to film and wrap up this video. I think where I got cut off was I was just about to talk about the two highlighters that stole my heart in 2021. The first one was Benefit Cookie. This was a gift from my wonderful friend Tan. I will link her YouTube channel and her Instagram page down below. She seems to be a little bit more active on Instagram. She is the loveliest. She's an absolute sweetheart. She's a fellow New Yorker and um, she was one of the first no, she was the first <laughs> friend I made on YouTube when I started my YouTube channel in 2020. So she will forever have my heart. And she was kind enough to gift me Benefit Cookie in 2020 at the end of the year. It, I was on my no buy, I couldn't get it. And I have to say, on my fair skin, I love this. I think it's magic. It's got such a pop, but without, without accentuating my texture, without leaving streaks on my face, I think this is such a fantastic highlight highlighter and I will continue to love this I'm sure and then the other highlighter that I bought at TJ Maxx actually and have loved it ever since is the extra dimension skin finish in double gleam by MAC I have never had a MAC highlighter before I have MAC products like I still have a couple of lipsticks left but I've never been like a huge MAC fanatic when I first started watching beauty YouTube MAC was all the rage but at that point I was just dipping my toes into makeup. I couldn't afford high-end stuff, not that I still can. I was really going more for drugstore. This is definitely more packed in the pan than the cookie highlighter. Like it has a very different texture. The cookie one is softer. It's not quite as blingy as the Benefit one, but I love them both. They look fantastic on my skin. Benefit one, yeah, and Benefit one is like thicker and even swatches much more impactful. Oh yeah, like you can right away. Well, I don't know. With this new lighting, I don't know what you can right away or not right away tell, but that is a much thicker, more denser swatch. And with the MAC, I would have to build that up quite a few times to get it anywhere near cookie. But on the skin, I love both of these. They are just so, so beautiful. So those have been my highlighter loves in the year of 2021. I know they're not products that were released in 2021 by any means, but as I think I've mentioned before, that's not what this video is about. It's about products I discovered in 2021. And I just have two other products. I have a mascara. This is the Rare Beauty. I don't remember the name of it and it doesn't say it on this packaging because I only have the travel size. This mascara does it all for me. It lengthens, it volumizes, it doesn't budge, it does not flake. I love this thing. 
absolutely love this thing. I think I heard about this also from Samantha March. I feel like half of my favorites of 2021 are somehow connected to Samantha March. Either she made me buy it or she created it with the brand. So the last product, again, speaking of Samantha March, are the Ofra glosses that she came out with. And actually the two shades that I love the most, I can't find. I thought they were in my purse. They're not. I have no idea where they went. I hope I find them with the move and everything. Who knows? Maybe they get buried somewhere. Maybe I lost them. Them. This one is actually the one that is my least favorite. I do have it on today, but my two favorites, especially the pink one, I think it was called Peony. And then there's like a more bronzy one that is named after her dog. And that one is called Queen. Her dog is Aries, but she calls her Queen. Those are the four products I didn't get a chance to talk about. And I don't believe there was anything else that I wanted to discuss. I know I had very few products laid out in front of me that day. If I am forgetting something though, you know, maybe I'll discuss it in a future video, but that's what I remember as being my tippy top favorites of products I discovered in 2021. Funnily enough, I am wearing the same sweater today as I was that day. So in that sense, it's pretty funny that um, I decided to refilm that little clip while wearing the same exact sweater. I would love to hear what were some of your top 2021 favorites. Please share what you've been enjoying down in the comments and just one more reminder to please subscribe if you haven't already i hope that you enjoyed this video and i hope that you are continuing to stay safe and healthy taking care of yourselves and those around you and i can't wait to see you in my next video thanks so much for being here guys bye